December 24th, it's the night before Christmas. And while most people in the small town of Carnation, Washington, are busy hanging their stockings with care, it's a very different scene at the rural home of beloved locals Wayne and Judy Anderson. Shortly after 5 p.m., dispatchers at the Kane County Sheriff's Office receive this chilling call. Hello? A few seconds of what sounds like screaming. Hello? And then the phone goes dead. Deputies are sent to investigate the Andersons' 10-acre estate, but never make it past the lock gate at the end of their long driveway. Then, two days later, December 26th, thanks to a gut feeling from mail carrier and Judy Anderson's best friend, Linda Teeley, the true nature of the 911 call is revealed. Christmas Eve, Christmas comes and goes. After the holidays, we all get back to work. Right. Take me there. The last time I had seen Judy was on the 23rd and we had hugged because we knew that we weren't going to probably cross paths until the day after Christmas. On the 26th, I went to work, probably seven o'clock when I went into work, and Judy wasn't there yet, which wasn't real strange. But by 7.30, she should have been there. And by about quarter to eight, there's no doubt in my mind that there is something very, very wrong. Call it best friend's intuition or something else. But with little more than a hunch to go on, Linda leaves work and races to Judy's house. So uh, by now I'm crying. I mean, I know there is something wrong, drastically wrong with my friend. And soon it seems her worst fears are confirmed. The house was unlocked and Judy always kept her house locked. And so I opened the door a little bit and I yelled, Judy, it's Linda and there's no response. And so I open the door farther and lean in and yell, Judy, it's Linda, we're worried about you. I look down and I can see a man is laying on the ground. 911, uh, there's been a murder. There's three people dead that I can see right now. Inside? I just came up, she works with me. Inside the house? Yes. What do you see? There's a baby and a man and a woman and she's my best friend. Terrified and in shock, Linda continues talking with dispatchers, trying to make sense of the horror. And this is your best friend? Well, you know, looking at the person, that's the woman that's dead out there, I'm not sure it's Judy. There's no light in that room. In fact, when investigators arrive around 9.30 that morning, they find that the adult bodies are actually those of Wayne and Judy's son, Scott, and daughter-in-law, Erica. The baby boy, their three-year-old son, Nathan, still clutching his mother's chest. Sadly, beneath Erica's body, apparently huddled for safety, they find a fourth victim, five-year-old daughter, Olivia. All four members of the family have been shot through the head. It is one of the most heinous crimes former county prosecutor James Conant has ever seen. There was very little sign of struggle. Uh, Scott Anderson had taken his boots off and they were lying at the at the foot of the couch and so it wasn't as if somebody had been ambushed when they walked in. And it's about to get even more unbelievable. I was called in the early morning hours the day after Christmas. The first call I received from the um, sergeant who was presiding over the crime scene that morning was that there were four dead bodies in a home. A short time later, just about the time I was uh, en route to the crime scene, we learned that there were actually six bodies. Hidden in a shed behind the house, officers find the bodies of Wayne and Judy Anderson. Like the others, they have been shot to death. Judy's best friend, Linda, gets the news while still on the scene. While we're in the, the squad car, the police radio comes on, and they used a, a something like, he said something like L6 or something like that. And the detective immediately moved to turn off the radio. And I said, they found more bodies, didn't they? And he says, yes. He says, this is the worst murder case I have ever been on. I just cried. Across town, Erica's mother, Pamela Mantle, is just getting the news. She last spoke with her daughter as she was leaving for the Andersons two days before. The thought of my daughter walking in there thinking she's, you know, going to her in-laws, everybody's having a great time. She was in a wonderful mood and it's just like so shocking. You can't, you can't digest it or get it through your head that these people, you're not gonna see them again. Because they were just here, you know? 
With six bodies and no suspects, investigators begin scouring for leads. Did the killer or killers know the family, or was this the work of a random spree killer who could be looking for their next victim? As it turned out, police would not have to look far for clues. Coming up, a shocking confession. And... Nathan was shot by this man. Chilling new details about what really happened on that oh-so-unholy night. It was smoky still, and it smelled of blood and death.